Hello and welcome to this podcast from the BBC World Service. Please let us know what you think and tell other people about us on social media. Podcasts from the BBC World Service are supported by advertising. Water is essential to life on Earth. In some parts of the world, access to water is relatively easy. There's high rainfall, lakes and rivers. But in drier climates, especially in arid deserts, the rainfall is very limited. By 2025, the United Nations has forecast that 1.8 billion people will be living in countries or regions with water scarcity. And two thirds of the world's population could be under conditions of water stress. Climate change is likely to further aggravate water availability problems caused by extreme weather events. So, the challenge is to find different ways of tackling these problems. And this is where the extraordinary behaviour of a Namib beetle could come to our aid. Hi, I'm Patrick Ayi and this is 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter, an original podcast from the BBC World Service, which explores how animals have helped us solve problems and inspired some amazing inventions. If you've enjoyed our podcast so far, please spread the word. Tell everyone you know. And if they've never listened to a podcast before, show them how to find a podcast app and search for us. And most importantly, show them how to subscribe. And please do leave comments and ratings where you can using the hashtag 30animals. In this episode number 13, Stenokara Beetle and Water Collection, we'll be discovering how a head-standing beetle can teach us how to extract water right out of the air. Stenokara grossalipes, also known as the fog stand beetle, is a species of beetle native to the Namib Desert in southern Africa. This is one of the most arid areas of the world, with rainfall being both sparse and unpredictable. But what it lacks in rainfall, it makes up for in a coastal fog that can reach as far as 100 kilometers inland. The lack of rainfall makes this area inhospitable to many animals. But the fingernail-sized Stenokara has an evolutionary trick that helps it to survive by extracting water out of the desert fog. There are no gizmos or gadgets here. The beetle uses its own body to collect water. Instead of basking in the sun, these beetles bask in the fog. It performs what looks like a headstand on the ridges of sand dunes that face into the wind. And the water from the fog slowly begins to collect on its wings, or to be more precise, its hardened wing cases. And eventually, the moisture runs down its back and towards its mouth. Here's how it works. There's a pattern of bumps or nodes along the beetle's back. The droplets slide off these bumps into small channels towards the beetle's mouth. So the beetle is able to survive by collecting water on the surface of its bumpy back from the early morning fog. But there's an art to these water-collecting handstands. The Stenokara beetle has long spindly legs and it stands on a small ridge of sand facing into the breeze with its body angled at 45 degrees its head facing upwind, and its stiff, bumpy outer wings spread against the damp breeze. Minute water droplets, and when I say minute, I mean tiny droplets of 15 to 20 micrometers in diameter, so small that you can't see them with a human eye, gather on its wings from the fog. Here, the droplets stick to the hydrophilic or water-loving bumps, which themselves are surrounded by waxy hydrophobic or water-repelling troughs. Droplets flatten as they make contact with the hydrophilic water-loving bumps, preventing them from being blown by the wind and providing a surface to which other droplets become attached. It's only when the droplet reaches roughly 5 millimetres in diameter that it becomes detached and gravity causes it to roll down the beetle's slanted back, guided by the different surfaces, and channels it towards the beetle's mouth. Simple, but really, really clever. 
Now, faced with the same problem, whilst we might not do handstands to collect water from fog, you may be surprised to hear that we humans have indeed found a number of ways to capture water from the atmosphere. Two thousand years ago, the Roman writer Pliny the Elder described how the inhabitants of the Canary Islands gathered fog droplets trapped by trees using stones placed under the trees to catch the dripping water. Since then, there have been an increasing number of fog collecting projects across the world. One of these was in the Chilean village of Chungungo, and was set up to supply 700 people with water. Giant mesh collectors trap droplets of fog drifting in from the coast. These droplets, which amounted to an average of 15,000 liters a day, were piped down from the El Tofo mountain to the parched community below. Plastic mesh is often used as it's cheap, efficient, and robust, but improvements are always welcome. And this is where lessons from the Stenacara beetle may come in useful. A beetle-inspired material might be more effective at gathering dew, particularly where there's problems in making the water droplets run off the collecting surface. If we look at the beetle's back under an electron microscope, its tiny bumps and channels resemble mountain ranges. This microstructure can be easily reproduced in sheet form using techniques like injection molding. Andrew Parker at the University of Oxford and Chris Lawrence at Kinetic Farmer, both in England, have been working in this area and see potential for such materials in a variety of devices which could be produced for controlled collection of vapors to provide water for drinking or farming in inhospitable locations. These materials might also be useful at collecting water from the roofs of buildings. Researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States of America have also emulated the beetle's capability by creating a textured surface that combines alternating hydrophobic—that's water repellent—and hydrophilic or water attracting materials. The primary application would be to harvest fog for water in places where water is scarce. But with some modifications, the concept could be extended to extract moisture from the air to create windows and mirrors that don't fog up like conventional ones. A company called NBD Nano also saw great potential in this area. Their suggestion was to create a self-filling water bottle. Which, depending on the environmental conditions, would be capable of collecting up to three liters of water every hour. Inspired by the beetle, the surface of the bottle would be covered with textured hydrophilic and hydrophobic material. A fan could be used to direct the surrounding air to pass over the surface of the bottle. The air would condense, and the resulting droplets could be stored in the device. Of course, the Stenacara beetle is not the only creature that has something to teach us about efficient water harvesting. The Australian outback is home to a fearsome-looking creature called the thorny devil, Moloch horridus, which sounds ominous, I know. But despite its name, this thorny lizard eats only ants and moves in a rather slow and gentle manner. But seeing as its entire body is covered in spikes, it does have a scary appearance. It uses these spikes, or more correctly, these thorny scales, not to attack but defend itself from predators. It can grow to up to 20 centimeters in length and is found in the scrubland and desert that covers much of central Australia, which is one of the harshest landscapes on the planet. But despite living in such arid conditions, the lizard somehow finds enough water to survive, even when the puddles it drinks from dry up. But how? Well. The secret is skin deep. Between the intimidating spikes are a subtle network of microscopic grooves. They have the ability to absorb water out of moist sand, drawing the fluid up against the pull of gravity across the body of the lizard and into its mouth. All it needs to do is stand in the right position and drink with its skin. But it's not a recent find. In 1923, a biologist wrote of the thorny devil that it has the power of absorbing water through the skin after showers of rain. But 
When you think about it, even that doesn't seem to make sense. A desert reptile with permeable skin would surely dry out. Then, in 1962, two lizard experts discovered what really happens by putting one of the creatures into water. They noticed how what they described as an advancing waterfront moved over its skin towards its mouth, which opened and closed. The water wasn't being absorbed directly into the skin, but instead was moving through a process called capillary action. This is where water can flow unassisted through narrow tubes because of the natural attraction the water molecules have to the surface of the tube and to each other. You can see this capillary action in action every time you dip a sponge or paper towel into water. The submerged part gets wet, yes, we know that, but you also see a waterfront moving up away from the water. The lizard's body does the same thing by acting like the paper towel. The water is drawn from the moist sand by means of a capillary system between the scales. In 1993, Philip Withers, professor of zoology at the University of Western Australia, suggested that in the early morning, the sand becomes briefly damp when dew condenses and falls to the ground, and the lizard was able to take advantage of this. Two decades later, Philip Commons and his colleagues at RWTH Aachen University in Germany studied this behavior in Texas horned lizards. This is another spiky-bodied reptile which can be found across North America, from Colorado and Kansas down to northern Mexico. They went on to design plastic sheets based on the skin, which prohibit the flow of fluids in one direction whilst promoting it in another. They suggest that there could be potential for using this technology in medical appliances, distilleries, and electronic ink displays, for example. It's amazing to think what other problems might be solved by a spiky devil. Head to our website now, bbcworldservice.com slash 30animals, where you'll find more information about this story. In number 14, Albatross and Drone of 30 animals that made a smarter and original podcast from the BBC World Service, we'll be hearing how the wandering albatross has shown us how to harness the power of the wind and the waves in designing a drone. Spread the word and remember the hashtag is 30animals. Thanks for listening.